our very own apostle Thomas M. Jenkins Sr. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Where would you be today if it wasn't for the Lord? Where would you be if it wasn't for the Lord on your side? I don't know about you today, but I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad that God is on my side. I am so delighted today and so excited to be here on this wonderful day. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this blessed opportunity that you've given us to come to share your word today. And God, we ask today that you would speak through us the words that you would have spoken today. And Father, we pray for all of these here in the sanctuary. And Father, we pray for the ones that are all around the country that are watching today and those that will be watching later, oh God, whether they're east, west, north, or south, wherever they are, God, we pray blessings over them. And God, we pray today for someone who may not be feeling well. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray you touch their bodies right now. They may be sitting in their living room, sitting in their homes, God. But God, I'm glad today for the healing power of prayer. God, no matter what situation we may have, prayer is the answer. And now, God, we pray today for revelation that will ultimately bring transformation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah today. I'm always excited to be in the presence of the Lord. 1 John chapter 5. Allow me to read this passage of Scripture just for a moment. The Bible says here in verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And then I want to read from Ephesians chapter 6 just for a moment, if you will allow me. I'm reading all these words for a reason today because I want you to, hopefully when you leave here, you will go home and read some more. Amen? Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Hallelujah. Stand therefore, having your lounge girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Let me say it again. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of all the wicked. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I read all these scriptures for a reason because a lot of times they have, have something to do with our message. Amen. Today, I want to remind you about the series that we've been preaching entitled, The Power of Overcoming. Somebody say, The Power of Overcoming. Amen? My question to you today is, are you an overcomer? Are you an overcomer? You got to understand today that as Christians, we must realize that we are in a war. How many of you understand that, that we are in a war? Amen? A spiritual battle because the enemy wants to take you out. Amen. Because Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. So we want to establish the fact, and our purpose today is for you to understand that as a believer, you can overcome. Look at your neighbor and say, you can overcome. 
It doesn't matter what we are faced with, we can overcome. And the most important thing is the reality is that if you live long enough, you're going to have some challenges. But if you know what the Word of God says and what His promises are to you, then you know that you can overcome. You know, you can overcome sickness because the Word says by His stripes we are healed. Amen? You know that you can overcome poverty because of what the Word says, that through His poverty we become rich. Amen? And it says if God be for us, who can be against us? So it, it doesn't matter what situation you may be faced with today, you can overcome. You may feel like you are lonely and all by yourself, but you got to understand that God is with you. Amen? He is with you. doesn't matter what happens. He told his disciples, and lo, I am with you always. Somebody say, always. It, it, it doesn't matter what you feel like. You may feel alone today, but you can overcome this feeling of loneliness. And so today as we proceed on, this is the power of overcoming part three. Somebody say part three. It's important for my records that we keep up with this because I want to bring this point home and you don't understand as we go along this Christian journey together. Last week, I mentioned to you that one of the first things in being an overcomer is that you have to be strong in the Lord. Amen? You have to be strong in the Lord. And, and the question becomes, how do you become and get strong in the Lord? There are a lot of Christians who have been saved for a long time, but yet they are still weak. Amen? They, they still don't have much faith. They, they still are always blown away by trouble when it comes. But let me tell you, the way that you become strong in the Lord is to get in the Word of God. It's to not just read it, but to study it and allow it to become a part of your life. If you get in the Word of God and you study the Word of God every single day, and not only if you study the Word of God, you spend time on your knees praying to God every day. You spend time fasting every day, and I promise you, the combination of these three things will cause you to become and be a strong Christian. That means that every little wind that comes your way won't blow you over, or you will move to a point where you want to give up and you are angry with everybody else. It's important that you overcome so that you can be a great example to the world. You can be example to others who have overcome. One of our friends, 92 years old, just turned 92 years old, and every time I see this woman of God, she's always smiling. She's always full of hope. She's always full of joy. It doesn't matter what the situation is. She loves God. And she always has a positive word. Hello, somebody. Can you imagine how encouraging that is that she's made it to be 92, she's still going her way, she's still serving her Lord, and she can say like the son, I ain't tired yet. Amen. I haven't gotten tired yet that I'm continuing to press my way. And so this message today is for you to understand it doesn't matter how bad your week may, has been, may have been. It doesn't matter what you've gone through these last few weeks, you can overcome and you will overcome because God is on your side. Hallelujah, somebody. And, 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 and so as Paul continued this whole thing about telling them to be strong in the Lord, amen. I'm not, you don't have to turn it right now, but First John says, even our faith, even our faith causes us to overcome. So when you are strong, and you have the combination of being and having faith in God, you have the ingredients uh, for being an overcomer. Hello, somebody. 
All right, glory be to God this morning. So as we continue on this journey of being an overcomer and understanding that just because you are a believer, it doesn't mean that you will never have any problems. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but somebody say, but... But the Lord delivers us out of all of them. You want to know one man who went through a lot of trouble, and you know him very well. His name is Job. Hello, somebody. He was one of the richest men that lived. And, and a day when everything was going well, you know, the devil always liked to ah, strong Christians. He loved to mess with folk and try to bring them down. And to make a long story short, you know, he went to, you know, the devil went to God and got permission to mess with Job. Hello. And the devil said, you know, if you take everything he'll got, he'll curse you and die. But you see, God had confidence in Job. Hello, somebody. God had confidence in Job. The question to you, does God have confidence in you today to know that no matter what you're going through, you're going to stand for the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Job lost all of his family. He lost all of his myriad, every, every material thing that he had, and then his body became sick. Hello, somebody. But Job said, though you slay me, hallelujah, yet will I trust you. When was the last time you said, Lord, though my body is aching with pain, I'm going to trust you just the same. Though heavy walls come down, I'm going to keep on leaning. I'm going to keep on depending on you. Glory be to God today. Things got tough for Job. Job said, the Lord knows. How many of you know the Lord knows? Because he is omniscient. And don't you know he know everything? And Job said, the Lord knows the way that I take. Don't you know that God, because he is everywhere and he knows everything, he knows what you're going through. And when you're going through like that, what God wants you to do is to take your prayer life to a deeper level. He wants you to go deeper in him. And you can cry out to God and say, God, I acknowledge that my body is aching with pain. I acknowledge uh, that I don't feel well and, and my reports don't look good. But God, I read in your word where by your stripes uh, that I am healed. Lord, I realize today that you are my shield. As you hung out there on Calvary's cross, uh, you were hanging out there for my future sickness, uh, my present sickness, uh, and your word declares uh, that every stripe that you took, uh, you took it for my healing. Uh, and I admit today, God, that my body body is aching, but I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to lean, and I'm going to depend on you. No matter what the report says, I read Isaiah that says, whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah today. Oh, glory be to God. He's your shield. No matter when the devil comes against you, remember you got a shield that's unbreakable. You got a shield that no bomb can blow up because your shield is Jesus himself. He's already bore everything that you will go through. He bore the shame and they hung him high. Hello, somebody hanging on a cross with no clothes on on a public street uh, agony and shame for you and I but I'm glad today that he overcame ah uh, we gotta do it church we gotta do it we gotta put on the whole arm of God and I promise you the enemy is never gonna leave you alone because he's going to keep on messing with you. The story goes on to say Job, he hung in there 
the end of the story here that Job ended up with more than he had when he started out because he stayed in the game. He didn't leave the court. He didn't leave the field. Some of us want to leave the table. We want to leave the court. We want to leave the game. But if you stay in the game of the Lord, I promise you, you will win. Just don't throw in the towel. Two things I hate, and both of them are losing. I'm going to stay in the game. I heard them singing a while ago. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to serve him until I die. The Lord said we'll never, we, we'll never free from trouble. But if we would keep this whole armor on. You see, some of y'all just put the armor on on Sunday morning. But if you put the armor on every day of your life, because you had to understand every day the devil is going to be aiming at you. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But you got to understand one thing, that Jesus pulled every one of his teeth on Calvary. When Jesus rose from the grave, he pulled his teeth and all he can do is roar. He can roar, but he can't destroy you. He can aggravate you, but he can't take you out no matter what you're going through. Don't get mad at his roar. Just take the stand for God and say, I am going to stand. I am healed in Jesus' name. I'm free. No more chains holding me. How many of you know, know that today, that if we stand, therefore having our lounge girt with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, you see, we wear truth. Everywhere we go, we have the truth of the Word of God. And when you know the truth of the Word of God, it means that you live the truth. It's something about walking in truth and living the truth. Somebody said that you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you live the truth every day, don't try to live one day on Sunday and live a lie on Monday. But if you live the truth every day, I promise you God, he'll take care of you. Don't live a lie. Because if you live a lie, you won't overcome. But if you live the truth, I declare you will overcome. Everybody may turn their back on you, but I'm glad today. The word says, if God, if God be for you, who can be against you? We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh, hello, somebody. Paul said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I don't care what I go through. I'm going to hold on. Somebody say, I'm going to hold to his unchanging hand. I'm going to hold on no matter how hard it gets, uh, no matter how the heat comes against me. I'm going to hold on until my change come. I want to tell you today, if you hold on, you'll be able to overcome. If you hold on, you'll be able to overcome. I wish that felt like preaching today. I wish that felt like preaching today. But oh, glory, hallelujah. And then he says, stand. Therefore, glory be to God. We got too many folk that won't stand for nothing. You got to stand for truth. Stand for righteousness. Stand for the poor. 138 plus million poor, poor, poor people in the world today. We got to stand for them. We got to give a voice to the voiceless. We got to give hope to the hopeless. But we don't understand what God has called us to do. You can't just stand when it's popular to stand. Sometimes you'll stand and you'll be the only one in your department standing. You'll say, this is not right. This is not right because you got to understand, you know, horizontally, glory be to God, 
it may seem like you're all by yourself, but realize very clear, you got whole heaven on your side when you stand for what this Bible says. He says, in so much as you've done unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. We got to stand for the poor. We got to stand for those who can't stand for themselves. And the way you do that is to follow the word of God. Ah, uh, glory be to God. And he said, we got to stand about with truth and having a breastplate of righteousness. You see, one thing about it, everywhere you go, the breastplate is on a righteousness, you live righteousness. You don't have to tell anybody that you're righteous. They'll know you are a Christian by your love. They'll know who you are by your reputation. Your reputation precedes you. And before you walk in the door, your reputation has already walked in. And so if you walk in righteousness, it doesn't matter how they hang your name on the highway, how they lie on you, no matter what they say to you, no matter what they do to you, you don't have to worry about it. Righteousness will always take care of you. You are too concerned about the popular vote. You are concerned about being famous. I'm not concerned about being famous. I'm not concerned about being popular. I'm concerned about pleasing my Lord because in a dying hour, popularity won't keep me here. In a dying hour, no friend that I know can keep me here. I'm concerned about the man that speaks and men lay down and die. And he speaks and men get up and live. I'm concerned about the man who walked on the Sea of Galilee. I'm concerned about the man that fed the multitudes with just a little bread and a few little fish. I'm concerned about the man who opened the eyes of blind by the man. Us, uh, sitting on the roadside glory be to God out of his desperation he met his destiny you want to know why you haven't stepped into your destiny because you're not desperate enough uh, if you're desperate enough for God uh, hallelujah Psalm 61 says uh, David said I run to the ends of the mountain to the ends of the earth uh, and when I feel overwhelmed uh, I go to the rock uh, higher than me Ah, uh, glory, glory be to God. I'm going to finish on this point above all. Somebody say above all. Taking the shield, hallelujah, of faith. Something about faith that will cause you to overcome. And I'm not talking about short faith. I'm not talking about little faith, but I'm talking about enduring faith. In the Greek, the word for enduring is the ability to hold on in the midst of conflict and adversity. No matter what you're going through, you hold on. When everybody's lying on you, looking at your crossways and Hang your name on the highway. During faith, say, I'm going to hold on. I, I don't understand how, uh, but I'm going to hold on. The saints of old were able to hold on. They had enduring faith because enduring faith has the patience to look and believe that there's going to be a positive outcome. Enduring faith says, I don't look at my circumstances because I realize my circumstances don't represent my destiny. If I hold on to the hand that never changes, the hand that created the heavens and the earth, the hand 
that can take all the water. Isaiah says somewhere in Isaiah 40 that he can take his hands and take all the water in the world in his hand. The water of the Atlantic Ocean, the water of the Pacific Ocean, the water of the Indian Ocean, and all the water in the world. He can take it in the palm of his hand. In other words, like they say in Liberia, a great big God. We said a great big God. We said a one who can change the night from day. We said a one who can heal cancer when the doctors say it's all over. Uh, and so enduring faith says I'm going to hold my ground in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of being lied on. You see, the Lord never said that we wouldn't have some wilderness experiences. The Bible said that Jesus was led into the wilderness. And God knew there was going to be a fight in the wilderness. There was going to be a challenge in the wilderness that Jesus was going to have to overcome. The devil was going to tempt him. And if Jesus had failed, then we wouldn't have anything to pull up by. You see, God leads you into the wilderness. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a fight, but in the wilderness, you're going to overcome. If you have an enduring faith, the capacity and the willingness to hold on no, no matter what's going on. That all you got to do is to hold on. The plane may be rocking and raging. I've been in some bad flights rocking and raging, but we held on to God, and God took us through the storm, hallelujah, on top of the storm and on to our destination. I want to tell you today, you may be in a storm right now, but though the storms are raging, God is standing by you right now. Don't you understand that God is, is in the storm? Don't you understand that God is a when God, if you don't believe it, tell me one day uh, the disciples was on a ship uh, in the ship of Galilee uh, going on across uh, and all of a sudden uh, there rose a storm. Uh, they did all they could do to hold the old ship uh, and then they got scared uh, and they ran down below and said, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Uh, some of y'all said, Jesus, don't you care that I I perish uh, this storm of finances, uh, this storm of health, uh, this storm of family, this storm of job uh, is about to get to me. Uh, but I heard him say, Thou will keep him uh, in perfect peace, uh, whose mind, uh, whose mind is stayed on thee. Uh, if you put your mind on Jesus uh, and not your circumstances, you'll be able to endure unto the end. Woo. Glory. I got to get out of here. I got to head south. I got to head south. I got another responsibility. I have an apostolic assignment this afternoon, but I'm going to tell you, see, I have to obey God. See, I get in the, I get in the wind and I get the preaching. God tell me, says, that's enough, Jenkins. Close your Bible, boy. Because he knows if I keep reading the Word, the Word jumps off the pages at me. And sometimes I get stuck. I've been stuck on Ephesians 117 for a few weeks now. I get stuck on a few verses. And I tell you, the Word is powerful. The Word is powerful. So stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, please. And I believe today that we have some overcomers in here. You're going to overcome. You, 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 you may be in the fight. You may be in the storm. But Jesus simply said, peace, be still. Because he represents our shield. Take on the shield of faith. The shield of faith. And that's, that's God. That's Jesus. And, and, and see, he, everywhere you go, if you take that shield with you, the darts can't, the darts, the, the, the darts, sometimes the darts may even 
hit you, but they won't do you no, they, they won't do no harm. They just they better bounce off. You got to understand, when you think about the shield of the Roman soldier, the, 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 and Paul was looking and using that as an example, the shield of the Roman soldier consisted of, it was, it, was, it was a big thing, I forgot how big it was, eight feet by something, but they covered it with four layers of calf skin. They were dried in four, la four layers, but they would, they, would, they would burn it first. It would be burned, amen, it would be heated. And remember, it was like they had to give up a sacrifice in order, a calf had to die in order for them to make that shield, right? So Jesus did what he what? He died. He became our sacrifice. And because he became our sacrifice, you and I can live today. And when that Roman soldier would hold up that shield, that shield was anywhere from four. It had four layers of calf skin on it, which made it about seven inches wide. And so when the, when, when the enemy would come and try to throw darts at him and throw things at him, that shield would bounce, cause it to bounce back. And don't you understand, when you learn how to use Jesus as your shield, hallelujah, I don't care how folk holler at you, but put that shield up. They may lie on you and say mean things but it'll bounce right off of you hello somebody you may shed tears for a moment but they're gonna go away because that shield of God that shield is gonna bounce them off you may go through some sickness but that shield is what's keeping you from losing your mind hello somebody you may go through some valley but it's that shield that'll keep you there because Jesus hung out there on Calvary he became our sacrifice Wherefore, take on the shield. See, the shield, unlike the breastplate, you can move it. You can move it. I don't care what, you can move it. Hallelujah. Sound like to me we got to surround God. We got an omnipresent God. He's everywhere we go. Hallelujah. He's with me on the plane on the way to Europe. And when I get to Europe, he's already there. Hello, somebody. Oh, <laughs> the other year when this little country boy went to Paris and stood in front of the headquarters of one of the largest manufacturing businesses in this world, 32 degrees, stood in front of that building, stood in front of the headquarters and the security, wanted to know why we were there. And we told him why we were there. And they didn't, they didn't bother us. They just let us stand where we were. They didn't mess with us because Jesus had already gone before us. And the shield was standing there as we were reminding people of what God wanted to do in this hour. Stood in the room with Department of Labor folk, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of all major government, this little country boy sitting there and articulating the mission of poor people, articulating the depression that goes on in our state articulating the role of the church. Well, why are you here? I'm a pastor. And the bishop don't make any difference, but I'm a pastor first. I'm standing for people that can't stand for themselves. I'm standing for people who have lost loved ones. I'm standing for people who need a hand up. They don't need a hand out, but they need a hand up. I'm telling you that God will be your shield because I admit that I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous. I tell you, thousands of people, thousands of people, as we went down the streets, My friend and Danny Glover and I, and one other person, as we were going down the street, and Danny said, you know, he said, you know, I've had trouble with my knees. And every time I land somewhere, people want to know, do I need a wheelchair? No, I don't need a wheelchair. 
I'm not going to be rolled in. I'm going to march and I'm going to stand for those that can't stand for themselves. It was less than 30 degrees that day. It was cold. It was cold. And it seemed like we walked forever. But I tell you, along the way, God, God gave us strength. God gave us energy. Newspapers and cameras from all over the world. But I want to tell you that God took us through that. And I want to tell you, no matter what you go through, if you put God first, he will see you through. He'll open doors for you that no man can close. I know for a fact that God has been with us through a whole lot, but it's been that shield. The shield went before us, and the shield protected us from all hurt, harm, and danger. As I stood with this mother who lost a child, who lost a child, her only son, she told a story. The pain of a mother, the pain of a mother who lost a child. I was able to stand there with her and his sister while they told that story. And we were marching for them. We were marching for those that couldn't stand no more, but they were standing in a better place. Sometimes you have to stand for folk that can't stand. You have to talk for people that can't talk. I'm telling you, things that are going on now, not too far from us, it's not right. It's not right. If you knew the things that I know, you would be crying right now. It's not right. But I'm telling you, we're going to keep on standing for those that can't stand for themselves because this book says so. We got to stand. On your job, you got to stand. In the shopping malls, you got to stand. Next week, we're going north of here, taking a busload. Starkville, Mississippi, going to make a deposit in that town, in, in the city of Starkville. As a teenager, I used to go to Starkville all the time and give testimonies. I preached there, revivals in different places. But now we're going back with an assignment to make a deposit in that city. And I know I am so encouraged. We had one of the the ladies that was in the hospital from Starkville and the doctors had said all this stuff and how long it was going to take her to recover. And she had told me, she said, you know, visiting the hospital, she said, I won't be able to be there because on the, eight, I'm, on the 18th I'm going to still be in the hospital. But we prayed for her. And I, and I got the text that she was going home and I said, Rose, we need to go see her. So I expected to see her in a bed because they said she wasn't going, she was going to be up there to the 18th. But I looked down the hall past the room, and she was walking with, the, with, with somebody trying to help her. And when she saw me, she began to run. And they said, oh, you can't, you, you can't, you got to slow down. Hallelujah. Now, y'all didn't hear what I said. They said she was going to still be in the hospital. Not only is she out of the hospital, she was out walking and began to trot until they stopped her. And so God... We'd already made the decision to go there. We're going there, and a couple months from there, we'll be going to another major city. We're going to these cities and making deposits because God has called us in this hour 
to go and do what God has called us to do. We can't do it alone. I spoke to people who are working with us all around and, and believing with me that God is going gonna, is gonna to give us victory. I don't be, I'm not a part of the belly aching crowd that says it's all over. As long as my God is on the throne, it's not over for your children. It's not over for your spouse. It's not over for your friends. It's not over for America. That God says that we can stand in these cities and, and we can release apostolically what God is calling us to do in this hour. And I've seen God do it. I've seen God shut whole cities down, whole, whole streets down. I went to the park up there in Missouri some years ago and they said it was the worst, it was the worst park. It was the worst park in America. While we were there, they were shooting under the tent and the gangs were rolling. But when we left, the pastor said that the park became quiet. Everything changed in the park. Hello, somebody. I know it can happen because of the power of God. Went to Illinois to a place and all around us were juke joints and everything else was there. But while I was there, my grandmother died. And, and somebody said, you're going to leave now? Now, grandma don't want me to leave right now. She want me to finish. Hello, somebody. We finished. And they said, after we leave, after we left, every juke joint shut down. See, y'all not listening to me today. Most of y'all don't know me. Y'all don't, y'all just know me in the sanctuary. Y'all have not seen us outside these four walls. Y'all don't know the anointing that's on our lives. Y'all don't understand. That's why I don't have a lot of friends. People don't like to talk to me. Because I don't have time for belly aching. I want to talk to people who believe that the condition that they're in is not their destiny. Who believe that God can do great things. Who can believe that they can rise above where they are and move to where God wants them to be. And so today I'm releasing something over you all over this place. I'm releasing something over you. Those of you that are watching, you're watching by television. You're watching right now. And God wants you to receive. He wants you to receive right now. Receive right now what God has for you. Say, my sickness does not represent my destiny. Put your hand on your body. My sickness is not unto death. My sickness does not represent my destiny. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am healed in Jesus' name. I'm healed right now. Somebody's lungs are opening up. Somebody's lungs are opening up right now. Your lungs have been all stretched out. But God says, God says, God said that he's touching you right now by your stripes. Uh, you may have had trouble with arthritis. Hallelujah. Man, your arm hurts sometimes. It just aches. It just aches. It hurts so bad if, you, if crying would help, but you cry. Your hip hurts sometimes so bad. But right now, in the name of Jesus, hey, all, of, all, all, all over this place, glory, glory. Yeah, you're back, you're back, you're back, you're back, you're back. Hey, glory, your back has been hurting, but the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, right now. In the name of Jesus, remember, doctors treat and God heals. Doctors treat and God heals when they cut you open and sew you back up. If the God don't heal that, it, you want, those wounds won't heal. The doctor will tell you, all I can do is sew you back up. But God heals you, amen? amen? Your leg's been giving you trouble today in the name of Jesus. Hey, da, 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 shanda. Ah, ba, 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 shanda. Glory. glory, glory, if you'll just believe. Don't worry about Thomas Jenkins. Don't worry about me. You just listen to God right now because God got a miracle for you. All these cities that we're going to, we won't take a dime out of those cities. We're going to deposit to the charities in those cities. Everywhere we go, we're going to make a deposit. Everywhere we go, we're going to make a deposit. Preachers today have gotten too greedy. Everything they do, they want money, 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 money. And on some television programs you're watching right now, the cash app would already be on the screen and say, send something, send something, send something, send something. Y'all know I'm talking, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Folk don't like me. See, when you depend on a bank of glory, then you don't have to beg. See, I know who the chairman is. 
And the chairman got power to speak to folks' heart, and then people do what they're supposed to do. See, the chairman got all the power. But when you take the power in yourself, God lets you try to use your little power, and you fleece the folk, you beg money, everybody in your congregation is broke, and you're the only one driving a decent car, you're the only one living in a decent house, something wrong with that picture! God wants the church to empower the community, to empower people, change communities, change cities wherever we go. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. All over this place, bow your heads. If you're not saved today, raise your hand. If you're not certain, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, today is your day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, just say, dear Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. And from this day forth, I will live for you. Because of time, I didn't call everybody up. Y'all, 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 y'all allow me to, to, to not take a lot of time today because I have another. Y'all understand it, don't you? Y'all don't mind sharing me today. Amen? Amen, amen. So, God bless. One, one last thing. Somebody's got some pain. And you've thought about it. Said, he, didn't, he didn't say nothing about my pain. But I just did. I, I just did. I, I just did that stinging, stinging pain that you have. God is, God is touching it right now. And then some of you have emotional pain. You're hurt over whatever, but it, it's okay because we, we, we hurt sometimes as Christians. People disappoint us and they hurt us. and Sometimes they wound us. And so the Bible says he took, he healed by his, every wound that you have, Jesus is healing that wound. He's healing that wound. It was my oil, give my oil up, baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I consider Marcus one of my sons. He's been with me for a long time. He's hung in here through a lot of stuff. And we thank God for him today. Father, I thank you right now for this great man of God who you've blessed over the years to be appointed by presidents of the U.S. to positions, to be appointed by mayors to, to positions. And God, as he and I, a few days, a few weeks ago, was in a federal building, and we saw his influence as he walked from place to place. And God, we pray today that you touch him. Lord, even in his position, that all corn vice president, God, I pray today that you would move upon him. And Lord, you know his desire today. God, sometimes it hurts so bad that we just say, Lord, I'm just going to give it to you today. And God, he says, I I can only trust you, God. And so, God, I'm going to ask you because I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired, Lord. It's getting heavy. It's heavier than I can bear. God, I'm giving it to you. Somebody else may want to join Marcus up here today. You may be out there feeling the same way. I got time for that. Amen? I'm telling you right now, you better come on. If you're feeling that way, just come on. Don't worry about what folk think because people go through stuff. We all go through stuff. You want to see my scars on my back? If you want to see my emotional pain, do you know what it's like when you pour yourself into people and they walk away from you? You drive 100 miles from them, you go to their mama's funeral, you go to their daddy's funeral, and they walk away from you. Do you know what that's like? It hurts so bad. You go ahead and your children say, I don't understand why you treat them that way, daddy. You know how they, what they've done to you. I can't even tell my children sometimes the folk I talk to because they still are hurt by it. They still are hurt by situations. But, but Rose and I moved on. We moved on by the blood of Jesus, and you got to move on sometimes. It hurts, it hurts. But it takes time for things to heal. It takes time for things to heal. And so this morning, in the name of Jesus, y'all just lift your hands, please. Don't y'all worry about the time. Time gonna take care of itself. They're gonna wait on me. Amen. Amen. I started the church. I, they can wait on me. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Sometimes God changes what we have intended to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes people just need that touch. Hallelujah. Let me write through here, daughter. Sometimes we need that touch. I pray for peace. I pray for peace in that situation, okay? I pray peace. And I pray healing in Jesus' name. We pray for everybody over there to be saved. We pray for a miracle, amen? We pray for a complete turnaround in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, touch right now. Touch right now, God. Touch right now. Touch right now. Put your hand on the sister's back for me right there. Put your hand on the back right there for me. In the name of Jesus, touch right now. Hallelujah. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus, do it, God. 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 We pray for her daughter. We pray for her family, God. Do it right now. It is not your fault. 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 The Lord told me to tell you, it's not your fault. And the devil been trying to beat you up, saying it's your fault. It is not your fault. So the devil, come over and help me with your sister, please. What Deborah? Where's Deborah? Come over here. Yeah, Deborah, come over here. I'll just stand right in front of your sister for me. She got the back. I want you to take the front. I want you to hug your sister. She knows it's not her fault. She knows it's not her fault. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. She hasn't done anything wrong. It's not your fault, honey. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Now you stand behind Deborah for me. I need to support her, okay? You help her. All right, I got it going here. In the name of Jesus, it is not your fault. Somebody else says, not my fault. It's not my fault. Excuse me. Hallelujah, it's not my fault. So good to see you, sir. Man, thank you for being here. Good to see me in. Thank you so much. This, you came with this young lady? Your wife, hallelujah. Put your arms around this woman, man. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Y'all make my day. Y'all make my day. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Don't blame yourself for nothing, sister. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I want y'all to hear. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> Glory be to God today. It's not your fault, sister. It's not your fault. Hallelujah. <laughs> not your fault. Not your fault. Not your fault. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, daughter. All over this place. Daryl, do you feel like coming down for a second? Can you make your way here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Daryl. Hallelujah. Just take your time and come on down. All over this place today. See, I, I follow the Spirit, not my own plan. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Well, Linda, Linda, come over and hug your honey. 30 plus years. In the name of Jesus, touch him right now. God, you've used him in such a mighty way. So many boys who didn't have hope. You sat with them and their moms in their living rooms and, and gave them hope. Turn their lives around. Thank you, God, for those kids that I saw firsthand that came to Jesus. Thank you, God, for Big Bobby, who's now with Chicago Bears, who sat in this church, gave his life to Jesus. God, I thank you for others who are not only playing professional football, but professional basketball. And other things because of this man and this woman of God who took them into their house, who mentored them day and night, who poured into them, and I dare the devil try to attack their bodies. I dare the devil try to attack their bodies. In the name of Jesus, right now, healing right now, healing right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. All over this place, God bless y'all. God bless y'all. As y'all go to your seats, I have one pastoral privilege that I'm going to take here. Hallelujah.
I feel like our hope is gone. Everything do seems to go wrong. Hold your head up, put a smile on your face. This is not a test that you're going through. All you gotta do is keep the faith. And don't give up And hold your head up And smile again One day you can make it To finish Like our hope is gone Everything do seems to go wrong Hold your head up Put a smile on your face This is not a test That you're going through All you got to do is keep the faith And don't give up Hold your head up and smile again. One day you can make it the finish line. You, you can make. Hold your head up and smile up.